So it's 1973, and some interesting stuff is starting here in America. We have a new brand of freedom, a brand of freedom characterized by the authoritarian democracy that currently rules our country in another type of democracy that's on the rise. But yes, we have Kirkpatrick as our president, and our superpower is overthrowing random governments and bringing them into the OFN. So I think we should start with something small with the Dominican Republic, something close to home. Also so with the current fear of Germany, Bormann getting sick. His succession crisis may give us another chance to spread democracy in Europe. We've increased the CIA's budget to $205 million. We'll probably keep increasing it further, as we need it to strengthen American influence and start cooing these governments. Oh, and the failed coup. The coup in the Dominican Republic has failed on all fronts. Oh. Even worse, the House and Senate, both controlled by the Republican Democrat Party, recently got briefed on the operation and are seeking to use this as grounds for impeachment. Kirkpatrick and you already fear this may be the end of their administration, if not the end of the NPP itself. Well, I guess her superpower is attempting to overthrow Latin American governments, maybe not succeeding to overthrow Latin American governments. Unfortunate, I guess this may be her downfall because 65 senators are either Republicans or Democrats and only 33 are in the NPP. So that means the Republican Democrat party not only has a majority, but a super majority. In interesting, that's, that's interesting. And the article to save America. <laughs> After a vote in the overwhelmingly RD-controlled House, former actor-turned-NPP member turned Democrat Ronald Reagan addressed the House. I've spent most of my life as a member of the NPP. I recently have seen fit to follow another course. The NPP has given up on centrism, and after this ordeal in Latin America, they have given up any sort of decency they still had. Not too long ago, two friends of mine were talking to a Slovakian refugee. A union leader who escaped from Mach, and in the midst of his story, one of my friends turned to the other and said, We don't know how lucky we are. And the Slovakian stopped and said, How lucky you are. I had some place to escape to. And in that sentence, he told us the entire story. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. The OFN needs to be a beacon of freedom, and not become what it seeks to destroy. Tomorrow, I deliver these articles to the Senate, where they will decide the fate of the OFN. I don't think Kirkpatrick here stands much of a chance anymore. I don't really know what she could do besides try to coup the government. <laughs> well, with how well her coup in the Dominican Republic went, I doubt she could do a coup here. And Yordi resigned the, the vice president. Okay, well that, I think, seals the fate of the cause here. But, um, I have some... Really bad news, guys. It appears that the Germans have cooed Italy, and democracy is gone, and they've left the OF OFN. And from Sicily to Venice, Italy is now engulfed in national socialism. Freedom is waning. <laughs> the Libyan Republic at least got free and is neutral, and Italy's former puppets stand with us and not the Germans. But this is not, not good. And Italy has recently acquired nuclear weapons, so this is not gonna change anytime soon. A new axis has formed, but in the midst of chaos, in what could be doom for freedom, a savior of democracy. The RD supermajority, along with several moderate members of the NPP, have convicted now former President Kirkpatrick in an 8018 decision. After Yordi's recent resignation, a brief constitutional crisis kicked off before Speaker of the House Ronald Reagan was sworn in as the new President of the United States of America. I can't promise the people of America peace, but I can promise them that democracy will never die. Well, my friends, we have some work here to do. It's time.
The time to sit around and watch the Germans take over Europe is no more. Under the new administration, we will send letters to Mexico City, Bombari, Delhi, Free Indonesia, and the Republic of Scotland. Because if a member of the OFN can be destroyed, then everyone can be destroyed by the terrors that Germany brings upon this world. Former presidents have decreased the debt, but our military has become nothing but rubble. We've increased our construction to the max. We'll now start building up a military industry like no other. The Germans have three to four hundred divisions in the field, with over 200 military factories, while we only have not even 30 divisions, so we have a long ways to go here, if we're going to have any chance against them. We're training several new marines, along with elite infantry, to begin a possible invasion into Spain, or maybe the English military command to liberate them. Because the British, while they're no friends of the Germans, have been cooed by their military and are no longer friends towards the Organization of Free Nations. Ireland and Wales may, however, be friendly, but they're well in the sphere of the English, so we stand no chance until something changes in London. The French state, which once again controls Algeria, can be usurped possibly by Free France, even though I guess they're friendly towards Free France? And now we must avenge the Spanish Republic, which lost during the Civil War as we invade the Iberian Federal Movement. Franco, though he helped us during the South African War, is still no friend of democracy, and after destroying the Spanish Republic, there's not much forgiving him there, so we'll have to invade Iberia. The strategic invasion has to happen if we're ever gonna have any success against the Germans. We have some pretty good marine divisions, I'd be surprised if they lose. They're not 40 widths, but they're good enough. Spain needs to be in the hands of the Spanish Republic before Germany can threaten nuclear annihilation if we don't stop this. And for many years, us Americans, we've been working on some special technology called the Chad Tank, revolutionizing warfare with a good template and a lot of research. A lot of different texts put into it, these tanks are nearly invincible. The Spanish Republic and Portugal are now both new democratic members of the Organization of Free Nations. Now we can maybe trade Spanish Africa to see if we can get Morocco to comply with us. And we also need to deal with the English military command. We need to break the British sphere and then maybe move into Scandinavia. The democracies of Scandinavia along with Finland will most likely be open to cooperation with us. Zhukov has gotten circled, but he'll most likely win this final battle to unite Russia. And yes, it's now time for the invasion of Britain. Just like the Germans invaded them before, we'll invade them again, but this time to liberate them from themselves. The rightful Prime Minister has been restored to power in England once again. We've also given the Faroe Islands to Norway as a sign of goodwill since Denmark's in the new axis and giving them the Faroe Islands would probably not be a very good idea. We also worked out a deal between Spain and Morocco where Morocco would get their territory back from Spain in exchange for them joining the Organization of Free Nations and defying the neighboring French state held Algeria. We'll also try to get to Libya into the faction. Maybe Pakistan too, they are Republic but the Republic of India doesn't get along with them so well, so they might not be willing to join us, and that's that's fine. They're not in too strategic of a position, so it won't be too big of a deal if they don't join. Also, we absolutely have to launch some sort of invasion into Greece or Turkey so that we can get access to all these members of the OFN here, who after Italy left got completely embargoed and cut off from any support we can offer, which is kind of terrible, honestly, so we have to do something. We have to either capture ports in Greece or Turkey. They're both authoritarian governments that we need to overthrow, but Turkey is more likely to seek help from the Germans since they're national socialists. And so now we'll begin the invasion of Greece. They're a perfectly neutral country, alienated from the Italians who owned them, 
alienated from Turkey who controlled them during the Ottoman Empire. Now we are going to take over them, kind of liberate them so that we have access to the Balkans here. We'll just make sure it's an extremely quick war so that no one can intervene if they want to. Should end within days though. They don't have enough divisions to really contest us. So while we were busy in Greece, the Italians and Germans in the new axis took Libya back. Understandably though, they just recently left Italy itself and they didn't have any protection with the OFN. And I guess being protected by the OFN hardly matters anyways, since, since Germany easily got Italy after all. And unfortunately, Sweden is collaborating with the Germans, so they might not be as willing to help us out as I initially thought. But Germany right now is probably powerful enough to fight the entire world by itself and win. So we need another friend, a Mr. Zukov. We need uh, some sort of Russian threat like in the original war we lost to deter some of the German armies here. We'll just have to send some volunteers and help them win this because this stalemate is just going on forever along this river. Our good friend General Burton in the Chad tanks here doing a good job. They can break through the forests here, but there's no way they're breaking through these mountains. I, I can't win a single battle in them, which makes sense. Tanks through mountains doesn't work out so well. So the French state, under order of the Germans, is completely demilitarized. Nothing but a puppet. Well, I guess technically not a puppet, but pretty much a puppet. They have no military and they're having an economic meltdown right now, so they're not in the best situation. So I think it's ideal that we stage something here. Maybe restore some form of France, even though Ost Paris and Paris are completely off limits here because we have a pretender to the throne of France, Charles de Gaulle, who has um, stood through thick and thin to try to liberate France, even though it at this point doesn't really seem like that's gonna happen for him. But now he could be very useful to our plans here. So we'll send the CIA over to Germany. We'll start doing some stuff. <laughs> well, well, whatever we can. Also, we did help Zukov here win. The USSR has been restored. It's much more stable than it was originally when the Germans attacked it, and now hopefully they will be able to find success. Liberating the rest of the stuff over here with our help, of course. We made sure to recognize Zukov early on, and we've helped him along the way. He may not have been our first choice to take over Russia, but he's definitely a good ally who will help us. Also, China, balkanized. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure Japan has it all under control, though. I hope. Okay, operation successful. Good. We are also turning Greece into pretty much a massive military base for our operations in the region. Complete max infrastructure everywhere, anti-air everywhere. This is going to be a useful part of the OFN. And Free France is now officially in the OFN. Of course, they'd accept, but they're really nothing but a shadow of their former self. They'll at least be useful and deal with the French state, which we'll launch operations with soon. And a beautiful color there <laughs> uh, to complement the pink color of Spain. Some success in Bordeaux. It's not much, but it's at least a subtle addition to the OFN. The Entente restored. With the reformed Britain and invigorated America, a newly united Russia, and successful negotiations with the long exiled Charles de Gaulle, Reagan has today declared the Entente of old to be once again alive. Sixty years ago, we worked together to defeat the Kaiser. It's time to to unite our forces once again. Germany may be more powerful than ever before, but they can only delay the inevitable. Tensions have already risen in the East. Azukov has called for the workers of Moscow to rise up. Japan has declared its neutrality. Italy has demanded the return of its former colonies. Germany has threatened nuclear annihilation if the Entente seeks to invade its homeland. Everything is coming together. There's only one piece left of this puzzle. The one man who can destroy the Reich. Heinrich Himmler. <laughs> Anyone is um, getting this message, but what's going on in 
the prosperity sphere is um, a problem that we have to deal with, please. Uh, this this is not not good. If we sit around, this may become a lot worse. 